Hello everybody, it's Adam Hurd with 973 Ramp again, and we're going to do a quick video right now on configurations um, and how they can be useful and hopefully not too dangerous. So you can see I did end up, did end up making that wheel shaft that we did not make in that other video, because this is a good example of a real easy configuration, but it's obvious that if you were to put that shaft over here, it's not long enough. Um, so it would be nice to make another shaft that's just that much longer, but let's say then down the road we changed wheels and the shaft length changed. Well, now that's two shafts we'd have to change the length of, and that's kind of a pain. You know, I, I don't want to do that. Um, so you can use configurations to make two shafts that are the same. Uh, not the same, but they share some geometry, um, and then you'll have to change one part. Then also it's just nice because you can save some time modeling. Uh, so I'm going to open up that part, and you're going to come to this third tab up here, it's the Configuration Manager. I'm going to rename this to short shaft and then I'm going to right click and add a configuration and we'll call it long shaft. So configurations are kind of different versions within a part. Um, I don't want to go too much into what exactly configurations are and those technicalities because I feel like if you look at one of the many videos on YouTube you can probably get that info and I'd rather focus on how are they pertinent to FRC and how can we use them. So if we come back in and edit this first sketch come to this dimension, you see these boxes here. This, these boxes means if I change this dimension, it changes in all configurations. Um, well, what we want to do real quick is come in and make it just this configuration, and then we are going to make this 361 thou longer, that's the length of a sprocket. Uh, and now we have that, and we can come in and change it. And then any dimension that you do not change to, you know, uh, just this configuration, if you were to change it, it would apply to both configurations. So now we have a second shaft based off the first shaft um, and saved a lot of work. So uh, what I think is a bad use of configurations, although some people would disagree, is like making a bunch of spacers as configurations. For us that makes things a pain because I like to track all of our parts with part numbers and I want the file name to be the part number and I like that. Um, and that's where copying and pasting parts or making spacers as a template which is not shown here but I usually have more tabs with more templates I still don't quite have this computer set up uh, is a better option than using configurations because sometimes you do too many configurations and it's rough on the people that you're working with so next I'm gonna do a quick example of a real simple gearbox that uses configurations to control both plates uh, so we're gonna do something real simple where we're driving some random gear uh, this is the bearing board we're starting with for an FR6 bearing. Uh, let's say we're driving a 40 tooth gear. So uh, I still like modeling OD, so we're going to stick with that for the video, although may change that soon. And we're going to drive that with a 12 tooth pinion, so the OD of that is. And uh, remember, this is two teeth more than the actual tooth count divided by the DP for OD of the gear. And I like OD because it shows me clearances. I want to see if stuff's going to hit. Um, and then we'll come in and do this center to the center, and that is first gear plus the second gear divided by two times the DP, which you, I mean, you could do two times 20, or you can write it this 40, plus the center to the center. Um, and we're going to power this with a sim, so let's come in and add that, that stuff. And I really wish I could use my keyboard and mouse shortcuts, but that would cheat you guys of seeing which tools I'm selecting. Uh, and actually, I really should kind of purposely go slower when I'm right-clicking and selecting tools to show what I'm doing, but I'll try to do that better in the future for you guys. All right, uh, and then uh, I'll show something that I really like to do a lot, and that's if I'm going to mount to a specific surface, I like showing that in the sketch if I can to really... I like to do a lot of design here and skip designing at the 3D level if I can so that when I go to 3D everything just works and I'm good to go. So, uh, oh, I just realized what I did is wrong here because you can dimension differently in SOLIDWORKS now, but that's the old habit there, dying hard of dimensioning off circles. Uh, SOLIDWORKS recently has changed it to where you can dimension off the outside of circles and you can select that and Travis on 971 just reminded me of that but 
unfortunately I did that. I will try to learn for the future. So let's say we are mounting on the 973 half inch hole pattern I love. Put these holes in. Uh, all the holes in our frames are 201s. Um, I skipped a line here. Remember, I like to lazily use construction geometry, which I'm doing it kind of slow here, but using my keyboard shortcuts, I can do that really fast, and that saves a lot of time over actually dimensioning stuff. Uh, it is one thing where, like, if you do change the tube size, you can get in a little trouble there, but we don't really change our tube size or our hole spacing that much. That's probably more holes than we need. Let's go with uh, that now. So that looks like the frame we're mounting to. Oh, I forgot that I did not check the box to have this link, so once again, gonna oh come on link with construction geometry uh, and then since we don't know anything else about the system I'll just dimension some offset I mean, we'll call that an inch right now okay so I guess this also is subtly teaching a lesson of how I like drawing gearboxes and this is sort of similar to the West Coast Drive one where I drew the stuff that I wanted and then I'm gonna draw material so maybe this is a pretty light duty gearbox uh, pretty lightweight so we won't go crazy with the size and we'll let this end up looking a little funky. Maybe we'll go no we'll go two and a half on that. And one point five here. And I do agree with the point that Travis and nine seven one made in our thread that you shouldn't have so many contours, but with some of the ways I lay stuff out like this and with pocketing, I feel the Pro con here is it, it's not worth trimming out. Uh, for anything that is reasonable to trim out, I will. Um, God, he's probably hating me right now. And then he's definitely going to hate me when I do this. Please don't watch this, Travis. Uh, some of these things I do, it's. It's, I don't want to say it's good practice, it'd be better to draw this stuff straight out, but if you're reasonably confident certain things aren't going to change, I know that's kind of hypocritical with me saying you should make everything as easy to change as possible, you can save a little bit of time doing stuff like this, and that little bit of time kind of adds up. Also, I often don't do this step of populating the external geometry until I feel like the design is completely done and is not going to change. You know, Kind of the same thing as pocketing. Um, and then let's say I don't actually want all these mount holes in the middle, so maybe I shouldn't have patterned that. But it's good to show them on the sketch. So I'm going to select all these, make them construction geometry so they don't show up. And we are going to make this plate. And I know sometimes you'll sit here clicking a lot of stuff, but I feel that that is worth it sometimes. And this is a quarter inch wide plate. So, uh, I want a plate to go on the other side of the block that holds the bearing, but I don't want to make, let's name this first, gearbar, single gearbox. These are horrible names because I'm used to doing part numbers. Um, and we're not going to do any of the gears and stuff in this, and we're going to put this in assembly where you guys are just going to assume that there is a tube in between. So we want to make another plate that is just the bearing support and uh, just these four holes, I guess this is a little inefficient weight-wise, but forgive that, and uh, I want those holes to be tapped, and I want just bearing plate. So uh, we are going to add a configuration that is bearing plate, and we're going to rename this one motor plate maybe. I like giving everything a name so that you know what it is. And now you can come in, and let's just start getting rid of stuff. So I guess I decide that I want this and all ah. make that co radial and this is the case where picking up existing geometry might be cleaner uh, sometimes doing what you do here you run into the trouble of I'm gonna cut this and clearly we're gonna intersect that other hole and that's gonna cause a little boo-boo but we'll come in and fix that and uh, you do end up and do some why am I keeping breaking solvers during these videos unfortunate. You do build in some uh, non-reflexiveness. Oh, actually, I know what I do in this situation. This is a little hokey, but I like it. Uh, sometimes when I know I'm going to run into this situation, I will come in first and 
select these um, and extrude. And this is just for that bearing plate configuration. So that was a real quick operation to come in and select all the geometry I knew I would not want on this plate. I'll name that like uh, bearing plate fill or something to show that I'm filling holes in. And then now when I come and do this geometry, boom, there's nothing to hit. I can just continue with our cut get rid of that. Oh wow, look at that. Now we got this beautiful plate and I will come back into this first sketch and take this and say this configuration and this is a spot uh, where on us, on 973 we use number 10 so often that if we dimension a whole 159 people know that's tap 1032 and I, that's kind of bad practice so I'll drop down to make those 0.1 so that we know for this configuration to come in and do whole wizard and show that it is a 1032 tapped hole. So this concept obviously can be scaled up to bigger and bigger things and uh, if you look at some systems 973 has done it's almost we have our standard hole pattern going down the tube oh, let's make an assembly of this just so we can model this. Uh, standard hole pattern going down the tube and then we have a series of plates that bolt on and those plates kind of have the kind of set all the tight dimensions between them like it's you know bearings or gear center the center and that sort of thing and then there's nothing external that's precise and those often are just configuration stack ups and that's a uh, it's kind of nice because we have these systems that are kind of contained to a series of plates and Therefore, that means we have the system that's kind of contained to one sketch. You edit one sketch, all the dimensions in your system change. Uh, our claw in 2011 is a good example of this. All of our systems on the 2010 robot, if you look at the kicker, if you look at the hanger, were designed that way. I know these CAD models are out there, so that's why I'm referencing them. Oh, I forget, I need to change this to motor plate. And boom, so now we have this gearbox. I guess that's backwards from how we drew it. Now the sim's the other side but that's not a big deal for these videos. I feel like you guys got the point. So you can see we can bolt through there into the tap holes. Could have been done the other way. Maybe these are the tapped holes, those are the clearance. Um, and you can come in at this point too and uh, edit things and say, well, God, I really should switch to dimensioning pitch diameter. Let's make this a 36 tooth gear now. And then this becomes 36 plus. 12 divided by 40 plus, and uh, our everything is still good. Oh, get out of there. So changes size a little bit, change the shape, and everything still works. So imagine how powerful that is when you scale it up to a whole system, a bunch of gears, a bunch of plates, an arm coming off or whatever, and all the stuff works. So you can get yourself in a lot of trouble there if things aren't done right, but if you're careful and you understand what you're doing, you can save a lot of time and uh, maybe I'll do a video poking around one of those old systems if the CAD model is still decent and showing th the benefits for me when I was doing that. Alright, thanks for your time everybody. And I